our light viewing behavior has perhaps the strongest effect on our levels of alertness and our capacity to fall asleep and get a good night's sleep. And this is because at the fundamental layer of our biology, every cell in our body needs information about time of day. It's no coincidence that we have a collection of neurons over the roof of our mouth, the so-called suprachiasmatic nucleus. That's our central circadian clock. It informs every cell in our body about time of day, but it is deep in our brain. It has no access to light. So there are a collection of neurons in the eye, the so-called melanops and ganglion cells, or sometimes called intrinsically sensitive, photosensitive ganglion cells. These are just neurons in the back of your eye, remembering of course, that the eye is actually part of the brain that's outside the skull. And those neurons communicate to the central clock when it's daytime and when it's night. So the simple behavior that I do believe everybody should adopt, including many blind people, we can talk about why that is, is to view ideally sunlight for two to 10 minutes every morning upon waking. So when you get up in the morning, you really want to get bright light into your eyes because it does two things. First of all, it triggers the timed release of cortisol, a healthy level of cortisol into your system, which acts as a wake-up signal and will promote wakefulness and the ability to focus throughout the day. It also starts a timer for the onset of melatonin, this sleepiness hormone or the hormone of darkness, as they say. Melatonin is inhibited by light. So by viewing light first thing in the day, you set in motion these two timers, one for wakefulness that starts immediately and one for sleepiness that starts later. The key thing here is that people are hearing a lot nowadays about avoiding blue light. Blue light is so terrible. Well, it turns out that blue light is exactly the wavelength of light that triggers activation of these cells. And that's exactly what you want early in the day. So people generally will say, well, maybe I should just look at my computer or my phone first thing in the day. Well, it turns out that these cells are very hard to activate early in the day and very easy to activate at night. So it's kind of like the biology is encouraging us, if you will, to take on the right behaviors, which are to get outside. Even if there's cloud cover, there's a lot more light energy, a lot more photons coming through cloud cover than you're going to get off your phone or a computer. And early in the day, two to 10 minutes outside without sunglasses is going to be really beneficial for a huge range of biological functions and brain state. I have made a practice, I'm in the middle of nowhere in the country right now, of, of getting up and not necessarily doing a full workout, but just jumping rope for literally two to five minutes, <laughs> two to 10 minutes outside facing the sun, where the sun is rising. Perfect. And there's certainly an effect. I mean, I am moving, so there's an effect on cortisol. And as you noted, it's like cortisol gets this ridiculously bad rap across the board. And it's like, guys, if you don't have cortisol, you're dead. So exactly. <laughs> if you like having storing glycogen and breaking it down into glucose and so on, you, you, it's important to have some cortisol. There's a tremendous, for me, mood elevating effect of this exposure. And I'm just, I really have never familiarized myself with the mechanism by which that would be the case. And certainly if it's placebo, I'm happy to just take placebo. But do you have any explanation for why that exposure can have such a mood elevating effect? Yeah, it's definitely not placebo. That morning light exposure is going to also trigger the activation of dopamine release. You know, dopamine being this essentially feel good neuromodulator. The, the best way to conceptualize dopamine is that yes, it's part of the reward system, but it's really the molecule of motivation and positive anticipation. That's really what it's about. And I should mention that the cortisol is going to be released in a pulse once every 24 hours, no matter what. That's coming, as we call it, it's an intrinsic rhythm, but you can time it by viewing light and or by getting exercise early in the day. There are actually data to just kind of emphasize what happens when you don't do this. There are really nice data from my colleague, David Spiegel's lab. He actually co-published this with the great Bob Sapolsky, a few years ago. David's our associate chair of psychiatry at Stanford. And they showed that if that cortisol pulse shows up later in the day, and especially if it's around 8 or 9 p.m., then it's associated with depression. By shifting that cortisol pulse earlier in the day, you ameliorate some of the symptoms of depression. And because of the dopamine release, you get this overall mood enhancement. There are four things that really time our circadian biology and these 
mood mechanisms properly and align us for sleep. And they, the most powerful timekeeper, as they say, Zeitgeber, because Germans discovered this mechanism initially. So the most powerful timekeeper, Zeitgeber, Zeitgeber timegiver. Oh, that's there it is. I knew you'd do it better than I would. <laughs> is is light? When you view light, and light is the most powerful stimulus for your biology and central circadian clock. Then it's exercise. So it's your protocol of jumping rope, facing the sun. You're layering on timekeepers. You're giving more signals to the central clock and the rest of your body about when to be active. And you're also indirectly signaling when you will want to be asleep later. Then it's feeding. I know a lot of people fast through the early part of the day now. That's very fashionable. And I do that as well. But were you to eat early in the day, that can also help. And then the other one is social cues. So interacting with people early in the day or with your dog early in the day, I have a dog, I live alone with my dog. So that's how I interact with the world socially. But those things are going to create wake up signals and your body will start to anticipate them and your brain will start to anticipate them such that if you miss it for a day, you're still going to wake up and feel that alertness signal early in the day. So this is not something that you have to do every day, but ideally you do it every day because it's like setting a clock or a watch properly. And I should mention that for people that live in areas with very dense cloud cover, you can use light boxes and things of that sort. But irrespective of that, in the morning and during the day, and anytime you want to be alert, you want to flip on as many overhead lights as possible. This is because these cells in the eye that trigger activation and alertness of the rest of the brain and nervous system reside in the lower portion of the eye. They view the upper visual field. Now, the inverse of all this is also important. As you approach the evening or nighttime and you want to go to sleep, that is a time to start avoiding bright lights of any color, not just blue light. And if possible, to place whatever lights are present in your environment lower in your visual field. So this would be desk lamps. Most people don't have floor lighting. Dim the lights. If you want to wear blue blockers or do something of that sort, that's fine. But I think people have taken the blue blocker thing a little too far by wearing them all day. That's actually going to disrupt your circadian <laughs> clocks. So in the evening, you really want to avoid bright light of any kind. And again, it's an averaging. If you do this every once in a while, you go to the bathroom in the middle of the night or you have an emergency and things are really bright for one night, it's not going to screw you up. However, there was a paper published in the journal Cell a few years ago by my good friend and colleague at the National Institutes of Mental Health. His name is Samer Hatar. He's the head of the chronobiology unit at the National Institutes of Mental Health. And what Samer's lab showed is that bright light exposure of any wavelength between the hours of about 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. cause a serious disruption in the dopamine system, such that in subsequent days, you have a disruption in a lowering of mood, difficulty in learning. There's a cascade of things that happen. In other words, we get punished for light viewing at the wrong times of the circadian cycle, and we get rewarded for light viewing at the correct times of the circadian cycle. Mm. 